A very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I don't know where you're tuned on to the Life Signatures Radio. Thank you very much. Nevertheless, this is a daily show, actually a teaching podcast, teaching, inspiring, motivating, all that stuff on three subjects, purpose, productivity, resilience. Those three are critical in life. We are in the middle of a series right about now. It's about seven or so episodes in. We've been talking about the fullness of the glory. How we attain, how can we attain the fullness of our glory as individuals? And we've been looking at that up to the level where we started talking about the six pillars of the fullness of our glory. We've already talked about pillar number one, which is uniqueness. You cannot ascend to the place where your glory shines if you don't delve into your uniqueness. In other words, if you copy somebody else, you're not going to be unique. I mean, you're not going to be glorious. The second pillar is what we are discombobulating. We are discussing the second pillar. We started talking about the second pillar yesterday, and this is big, and it's the most basic of all. It is to be useful. Let us go deeper into that. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. There's such a thing as the fullness of the glory of a human being. And I'm keen, ever since I started talking about this, I am keen to make the point that it is not a colossal, it's not a wave where a a certain dispensation of, you know, a race or a generation, you say that this generation was more glorious than the other generation and so on. No, when it comes to the glory of a human, it is... It is like the fingerprints. You don't have someone else's fingerprints. Actually, you don't even have someone else's voice print unless someone apes you. It's it's unique. It's different. It's it's you stand alone to the fullness of your glory. You are the only one. I am the only one responsible for the fullness of my glory to show up or to show off. And how am I going to do that? I need to know these pillars. And we've said over and over again that anyone anywhere can actually display this fullness of their glory. But we need to get ignorance. There are some two things that we talked about in one of those episodes that have passed. We say that there is the culture of the day which disciples us not even to think about the fullness of our glory. It disciples us and hands down to us the way we are supposed to do life and the way we are supposed to behave. And it is totally oblivious, doesn't celebrate the individual uh, uniqueness and fullness of the glory. That's the first thing. The second thing is ignorance. When you do not know that you can become glorious as a human being, you will not become glorious because you cannot become glorious arbitrarily or by fluke. You've got to know. And you've got to be absolutely discontent with where you are and what you're doing that is not glorious. We, we get so complacent, uh, the third thing, we get so complacent when we have, you know, done something. 
celebrate something like win an FA Cup. Okay, uh, that's a very cheap example. And we feel like we've arrived. We become complacent. But I gave you a scripture. I think it's uh, Proverbs 4.18 that says, Your light shines over and over again every working day until it becomes brighter and brighter until it becomes full glorious. Proverbs 4.18. If we're going to do that, we've got to, number one, know that we are unique. Number two, we've got to be useful. We started talking about usefulness yesterday in the episode. We've got to be useful. Absolutely. And we say that usefulness is about impact to this world. It's about contribution. It's about change. It's about people experiencing your difference. People experiencing the value that you're adding into this world. And that value you're adding, that uniqueness, that impact, it is connected to your uniqueness, which was point number one, which we talked about. And we say that it is impossible, nearly impossible for you to have the fullness of your glory if you're doing it for the sake of your own consumption and if you're selfish. The fullness of your glory will, for the most part, be revealed when it touches other people and positively impacts them or changes them. So we've got to rise above selfishness. We live in a world that is hell-bent on selfishness. I mean, we are so one of the most selfish generations you've ever seen. Individualism, it is on... I mean, you can live... In the olden days, it would be an, I mean, weird, downright weird to live in a community and people do not know who you are. Today, you can live in a community and nobody knows who you are for years on end. We've had stories of people dying and they only discovered weeks later when they are dead. Because our society is full of individualism. And then the the so-called liberalization of the mind. The liberal, let me tell you something. If you want to decode uh, the liberal mind these days, actually that word is a very good word, but it's been messed up. But if you wanted to decode the liberality that we have today, it is not. Check it out. Check it out. In any society where people are fighting for liberal, I'm, I'm, I'm a liberal mind, I can do whatever I want. That's exactly it. It is never. You don't see people fighting for liberality so that they can impact society and they can be different and they can make a change. It is always about their gain. Always about their consumption. Always about their stupidity. Always them gaining. Not the world gaining. Not the world being transformed. The liberal mind these days. We call ourselves liberals. Why do we call ourselves liberals? Because we are selfish. Individualistic. We just want to gain, 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 gain. But if you flip this, you will notice that where there is this so-called liberalism, there is no one glorious in there. Nobody. Nobody. There is no glorious person who is liberal. No, none. What have, what, has the, what have the... Let me ask you this question. Tangibly, what have the liberals done in society today that is glorious? What? Can you mention? Do you know a liberal? Do you know someone who is shouting their voice hoarse in this world about being a liberal? Check them out. They ain't glorious in any way. It's about them selfishness so we live in a society that is selfish individualistic liberal and that is directed towards feeding the ego just feeding ourselves people want to do that which they like because it makes them feel feel good it's my right it makes me feel good feel free and feel liberated right And at the end of the day, it doesn't contribute to any glory in your life. You, okay, if you do not want to be glorious, that's okay. Become a liberal. But if you wanted to be glorious, you should consider being selfless. 
I have come to realize that you can even add an antonym of selflessness. You can add liberal into it. But, but, but you've got to understand the word liberal. It's a very powerful, nice word. It's just been messed up these days. Just like the rainbow has been messed up. A beautiful thing. There's a time the, the mayor of uh, Entebbe in Uganda created a park for kids and painted the park with rainbow colors. Oh, my friend. It, people were up in arms that the, the park was being themed for gays. And he had to change the colors. That's one example of something beautiful being messed up and being, becoming controversial. The word liberal is the same. It's now an antonym. It's become an antonym of selflessness. The antonym, one of the antonyms, the modern antonym of selflessness is, is liberality, being a liberal. Anyway, increasingly, the glory of the human race is waning away with each succeeding decade because of this approach to, to life. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 when we change our perception of life and start looking at life in terms of what blessing you can add to it, what we start seeing is the fullness of our glory coming to the fore. But the opposite is also true. Because when we do life specifically on what we can get, what this world owes us, this world owes me this, this world owes me this, I deserve this, the fullness of our glory becomes a mirage, something that we cannot even attain even if we attempt it. So, gradually, we are seeing a human race that is becoming overly entitled. And entitlement effectively, it puts the responsibility, listen to this, the responsibility of making things to happen, it puts that on another person. Now, guess what? The other person who is going to take on that responsibility is two things. Either they are a slave or they are being forced or they are the ones on the road of becoming glorious. Because there is no way you're becoming glorious if you're not useful. Period. And I'm in no way negating the fact that there is, there has to be a law of compensation and the law of sowing and reaping seed time and harvest. These laws are totally different from the pursuit of entitlement. A case in point is a graduate coming out of university thinking that the world owes them. Back then, during our grandparents' graduation ceremonies and our dad's graduation ceremonies, that used to be the case. Today it ain't. You cannot be entitled and become glorious in this world. I'm going to end with that entitlement point. What happens is that uh, this school of thought of entitlement is, is, in, is interesting. First, the, the graduate is unknowingly selfish. We've talked about selfishness. And largely, they want a job so that they can improve their own status of living, which is absolutely okay. No problem with that. But if you stop there, it doesn't contribute to your glory for the most part it's a sad story and i think vocation hmm? vocation not a job vocation ought to be the conduit through which we deploy the fullness of our glory being useful yes we've got to earn our bread i mean we've got to go to work even jobs they are okay but if the main reason and the priority of a job if it's for us just to feed ourselves just to pay our bills there's no problem with that but it doesn't contribute to the fullness of our glory if you're interested in the fullness of our glory then the jobs that we are doing primarily we've got to be doing these jobs to solve a problem create an impact transform Make this world a better place and add value into it. So I hate 
working where I am not useful. And I think it's just innate in every one of us, all, all of us human beings. And I think vocation ought to be the conduit through which we deploy the fullness of our glory as humans and not a means of survival. We are going to continue talking about this in the succeeding episodes because my time is really up. But I have not exhausted talking about usefulness. If you wanted the fullness of your glory to come to the fore, you gotta be useful. Until then, bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.